Hello everyone, this is Board Games of Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty and right now I want to tell you about Salt on the Marmite King, which is a new roll and write game coming to us from Chile of all places. And that makes me really happy. This game has a lot of qualities that I enjoy that I've seen in other games, but it puts a new twist on it that does make it its own and give it its own life. I found it very fast to play, engaging, uh, colorful, and I like the world it creates. So that's kind of why I want to share it with you. Now, essentially in this game, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get treasure, the Marmot's treasure. And what that requires you to do is to uh, put a camp, put a treasure, and you're trying to get there. And along the way, you're trying to put down Tetris-like uh, pieces, trying to create a path to get there. Along the way, you're trying to trigger all of these abilities. You're trying to trigger all of these abilities. And at the end of the game, there's four quadrants here. And when three of them are completed by any of the players, one and up, the game is over and then you score. But the particulars about it are pretty interesting because... The way you lay down tiles kind of block yourself and make decisions hard. Also, you need to trigger these side games to complete things, and some side games are needed to complete other side games. Okay, so what do you do in the game? Well, uh, the great thing about it is you literally have your own play area. Now, this is a, a print and play version for me, but this is your own play area, and then you have cards. And the cards over here, everyone shares. You write down what you want. And basically what happens is you're going to put down a starting camp and a treasure that you're trying to get. And that's important because the treasure is worth 10 points and every step you take to the treasure is worth a point as well. Now the board itself is pretty dark, dark purple. And I wasn't sure that black marker would show up. So I'm going to use dice because they're a little bit brighter. So I'm going to write a number one here using a die. I'm going to put that right there. And the, uh, the camps go in one of the corners. So I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to use red for the treasure. I'm going to put it in the far corner for this example, just so it pops out. Okay, normally you would write it in. And then what you're going to do is you're going to try to apply these cards to the board. So let's go ahead and let's say we're going to start with uh, this card here. Okay. Now, when we look at this card, the card has a lot of information. It says two up here. And then it has this rectangle shape with four squares. And you can kind of think of this along the lines of a lantern dice or of patchwork where you get a shape, you can flip it, manipulate it, you know, flip it, rotate it. But the assets inside of the uh, drawing have to remain uh, in the standard place. So when we look there, what do we see? We see two, we see the shape, and we see a tree. All of that comes into play here. So what we're going to do, and again, I'm going to use dice to kind of do this. I'm going to put this on my board. So let's say I'm going to put it right here. Well, and I'm going to apply it in this kind of formation. Well, to show that we have feet, a path, I'm going to put um, blue to show that I have feet. I have a mouth, and the mouth will go over what's a coyote. A coyote in the game is normally negative points at the end of the game, negative five. But if I defeat the coyote, I'm going to use this to show that I defeat the coyote. The coyote is not showing. And then I have more feet. I'm going to put more feet right there. And then I have a clear spot. Clear means I've gained that spot, but I do need to fill it with footsteps at some point. Okay. Now you'll see here, I'm trying to create a path, but the shape itself interrupts my path. So you really need to path build. And that's a really cool feature in here. Okay. Um, I should also say, you notice that I'm filling up this whole line. That's this light purple. If I fill up this whole line of purple, you get a quality kind of along the lines of cartographers with the ambush. And when you fill that in, you make all the other players have to put a shape that they don't want in a less than optimal area. It, it goes in the area where the ambush occurred, right? So the, there's a flag up here. That's where the ambush is coming. That's kind of how that triggers, okay? So back to this card, I've laid this down. I've put down my shape. And you're going to notice that it says tree. And what tree does is it activates the tree area. The walnut tree activates the walnut area. And what that means is I'm going to write in this area the number on the card. In this case, it says two. So this says two. I put a two here. Every time I write a shape in here, I get a coin. Okay, these are coins down here. All the coins here have to be different. But every time I get a coin, coins are either worth points at the end of the game. I could trade them in to, I can trade two in to turn a square into a footstep. I could have done that to help myself. I could have had four coins and then traded in to write another shape on the board. Let's say I use this shape and I wrote that shape on the board. And then that could have really helped me out too. 
And there's different ways they're going to work. Now, the way all these side games work, this is kind of like Corinth, one of the greatest uh, roll and writes ever, Corinth, okay? So let me explain kind of how each one of these side games work. The mouth, the mouth activates the teeth zone. You have to put all different numbers, and then they have to increase in value as you go up. If you fill in the bottom row, you get a ladder. The ladder is important because that'll help the path zone. The path zone is triggered when you have feet. When you have feet, you are walking, you eventually get bonuses. Like this is a, a walnut bonus. This is another teeth bonus, but I can't get there or there without a ladder. So I need the ladder. So I can get a ladder here. I can get a ladder in a compass zone. Um, when I go to the second line here, I get a, a walnut, and then I can write a number of my choice in the walnut. Again, that's going to give me money, and then I can spend the money to do something else. So there's a decision point everywhere. If I get to the top of this pyramid, I get to activate something twice. In the nut zone, you see nuts here, okay? If I activate the nut, what I do is I write in the number of the card. So you'll see on this nut here, there's a two. So I could circle in the two here, or I can put the two here or wherever. When I complete columns, I get benefits. When I complete this column, it's gonna give me a compass, and I'll explain compass in a second. Again, if I complete a compass here, I get a ladder. If I complete this column, I will not get negative points for empty squares. Empty squares count against you. I could also kind of get the diagonal and I get another coin. If I get the compass and I cover up the compass, again, it's a path and I get to decide how I want it to wind. I can get more nuts or more teeth or more treasures, okay, stuff like that. The path, again, gives me a bunch of goodies. And then the walnut zone is uh, straight coins. And then for the coins, I can trade them in. And that's basically how the game is going to go. You're going to do this until you have three of the four quadrants filled. Along the way, you might have more treasures you can get. Uh, you can have more camps if you get stuck and get out of the way. That can really help. You know, like this treasure, maybe I, from this camp I realize I can't get here. So maybe I have the opportunity to draw a new uh, camp. I'll just put it right there because I want that 10 points. I know this is a lost cause, whatever. There's, there's no path, but I get 10 points. Maybe that will help. The game moves pretty quickly. It seems pretty engaging. Um, I'm enjoying my plays of it. So if you're in, interested in playing this, please let me know. I'll help you as much as I can with the scoring and figuring out the rules. I'm happy to do so. And until next time, friends, again, that is Assault of the Marmot King. Uh, and I hope you enjoy that. Please investigate. Take care. Bye.